Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make it so the AI will go to a random locker, will go to the closest locker, or go to the locker in which the player is hiding in. So previously I've set up how to actually hide in a locker, then I've also done a video on setting up how to make the AI search through a locker, and now we're going to go over how to make the AI go to a locker and then search through it. So again, we've got the three in this example, I think it just goes to a random locker, which I have set up currently, but obviously we're going to be making all three today. So in this example that I have set up currently, it's going to go to a random locker after a set amount of time, like so, and it will search through that locker like that. And if we were in that locker, it would then catch us. I'll also show you going to the player's locker. So if I were to hide in here, it should go to this locker and catch us. As you saw there, it's then got us like so. And then again, we also have it, so it goes to the closest locker, which I'll show you after we set it up. But this is what we're going to be making today. I'd suggest watching the other videos first, but without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our AI in which we have this code in, which for me is locker AI. And in here you can see this is the code which we set up previously of just catching the player hiding in a locker. So once we're in here, the first thing we want to do is we want to create a new macro. And this is just going to make the code a little bit easier and more efficient for us. So let's create a macro here and I'm going to name this one go to locker like so. And as it sounds, this macro is just going to cause the AI to go to the locker, depending on which one we set. So it could be the player's locker, a random locker, or the closest locker. But this is just going to be general going to a locker. So we're going to add an input. This input is going to be in, and it's going to be an executable. Then we're going to add another input. This one is going to be locker, so which locker we want to go to. And that is going to be a blueprint reference for our locker. Mine is named locker hide BP and it gets an object reference like so. And then we're also going to add an output named on success, and that is also going to be an execution. So I'm going to move the outputs out a little bit, and out of the in, in the input, I'm going to get AI move to, like so. The pawn is going to be get a reference to self, and locker can just go straight into the target actor there. However, what I'm going to do is get a different location within that locker so I can be more specific with where I want it to go. But I'll do that in a second. And out of on success of the AI move to, I'm going to firstly get catch player or call function catch player, which is the custom event we set up in the previous episode here of actually catching the player inside of the locker. So you can also name that search locker if that makes more sense for you. So I might do that instead because obviously if the player's not in there, it's not going to catch them, it's just searching. So I think that makes sense. Go back into my macro and then connect that into the output on success there, like so. So now when we call this, it should go to the locker, obviously once we set up this destination as well. To do that, I'm gonna minimize it and open up my locker BP, which for me is locker hide BP there. Go straight up to the viewport, we're gonna add a component, and we're going to add an arrow, like so, and we're just gonna move this to be in front of the locker where we want the AIs to stand. So I think about 120 on the X is gonna be good, and again, this is just where we want the AI to go to when searching through the locker, so there's going to be good for me. Obviously, move this to be wherever you want. We compile, save, and close that, or well, before, I might actually rename this to just be AI location. And now, compile, save, and close. Back in our AI, what we can do is come out of this locker object reference on the input there, and we can get AI reference, or AI location, actually, I think I named it, Scroll down, and now we have that arrow there, or just whatever you named that arrow. And then we're going to come out of that and get the world location of that arrow. And that world location is going to be going into the destination of the AI move to there. So essentially what's happening is we're going to tell the AI to go to that arrow so it moves to in front of the locker we want to go to. And we're going to set up this locker variable whenever we call this macro so it goes to the specific locker we want it to go to. So that is now going to work perfectly, and again, because it's in our macro, we can just reuse this wherever we want, which again makes it more efficient. So compile, save, and close that macro, going back into the event graph here. And so next, I'm going to set up going to the nearest locker. So the AI will just go to the nearest locker to it. So above our code, I'm going to right click, and add a custom event, naming this one, go to nearest locker. And out of this, I'm going to get all actors of class, so we're going to get every single locker we have in our level. Actor class is going to be locker hide BP there, 
or your locker blueprint. Out actors is going to go into a for each loop because we want to check the distance of each locker we have so we can see which one the closest is. So after this, I'm going to right click and get distance two with the target being self and other actor go into the array element there. So we're going to get the distance from the AI to the locker. And then out of this return value, we want to see if it's A, less than the closest distance and B, also greater than the minimum distance. So it's in between those values, meaning it is then the smallest and closest actor. So out of the return value, we're going to get a less than float. So a float is less than a float and also a float is greater than a float. Connecting these both up with an AND boolean like so, so they both have to be true. But what do we want to compare them with? Well, there's top one, so the float is less than a float. We can right click, promote a variable, name this one closest distance, and we can compile and change this default value to be, let's say, a thousand, like so, so it has something to go off of because it needs to be less than a thousand, so it needs to be close. So I might have said greater than earlier, I'm not sure. Uh, if I did, sorry, I meant less than because it needs to be less than this distance to make sure it is close enough to the AI. So you can even increase that more if you want, just add a load of zeros on there. And then for the bottom one, a float is greater than a float. We can right click again, promote a variable, naming this minimum distance, compile and change its default value to let's say 10. Or you can leave it at zero. This is just essentially the minimum distance it needs to be. So it needs to be less than the closest distance and greater than the minimum distance. So it has to be between 10 and 1000, which will work perfectly. So now to check this, we can hold down B and left click to get a branch, connecting that into the loop body and the condition being this AND boolean we've just made there. So for every single actor of our locker, it's going to check to see if it is the new closest actor. Because obviously if it is less than the closest distance and greater than the minimum distance, it is now the new closest because it's closer than the last one. So if it is closer, we can right click the array element, promote a variable naming this closest locker, setting that off of true of this branch. And also off of true, we want to set closest distance like so. So drag it onto there, set closest distance with that being the return value of this get distance two. Because obviously if the first one is going to be the closest one, so we can set that. And the second one, we then want to compare if that is now closer. So we've updated the closest distance to be this new value instead to see if it's closer or further away. And then out of completed, so once it's checked all of the actors of the locker and found out which is the closest, we want to then go to that locker. So we can come out of completed and get go to locker, our macro that we made earlier. And the locker input value is just going to be the closest locker variable which we've just set up, because obviously we set that there so we know which the closest one is. And on success, we're also just going to reset the closest distance. So set it there and again, set it to some big number, for example, 10,000 like so, just so this code will work every time. In fact, I might just set it back to a thousand instead. So I compile and save, and that is now the code set up for going to the nearest locker. So I'm just gonna select all this, move it up a bit, hit C to comment it, naming this nearest locker. So when you call this custom event, the AI is going to go to the nearest locker, and once it gets there, it's then going to search through that locker as well, and if the player's in there, it's gonna catch the player. Now let's set up going to a random locker. So this is a very similar method. So just above this, we're gonna right click, add a custom event, naming this one, go to random locker. Out of this, we're again going to get all actors of class as we want to access every locker we have. Actor class, once again, being our locker hide BP here. Out actors, we now want to get length. So we're gonna find out the length of this array and we're doing that because out of this, we only want to just get random integer. So we're going to be getting a random integer with the maximum of this length. So we're going to get one between zero and how many lockers we have. That's because out of out actors again, we're going to get a copy with the index being this random integer. So it's going to just pick a random locker from the amount that we have and simply out of get all actors of class, we can then go to locker, again, that macro we made earlier, which is why we made it into a macro, because you can see how easy it is to now just call that. The locker will be that get there, and that's very simply all we need to do. We are literally just going to get a random actor from our actors of class, from the amount of lockers we have, and then go to that locker. 
So we can select all that, hit C to comment it, naming this random locker. So again, when you call this custom event, the AI is going to go to a random locker. And last but not least, let's set up going to a player's locker, which again is just as simple. So we can right click, add a custom event, naming this go to players locker. Once again, getting a get all actors of class, with the actor class being our locker hide BP there. Out actors, this time we're going to go into a for each loop with break. Execution going into there. And all we want to do is see which one the player is hiding in. We can do that by coming out of array elements and get is hiding, which is a boolean we have made in that locker to see whether or not the player is already hiding in there. And we can now obviously use that as well to see if the player is in that locker. Because that will be true if it's in that locker and false if it isn't in that locker. So we can hold down B, left click to get a branch. With that as a condition, and the branch going into the loop body. So again, it's going to check every instance of this. Out of true, we can go to locker, that macro once again, with the locker being the array element from the 4H loop. And on success, can go into the break of the 4H loop with break. And I'm going to double click the execution node just to keep it nice and organized. So the reason we have the break is because once it's found that locker, we don't need to keep searching through the whole list of lockers. So we can just break the loop and we're no longer going to be searching. So that's a much more simple and effective way of doing it. We're going to search through all the lockers until we found the correct one that the player is hiding in, and then we're going to stop. Obviously, if the player isn't hiding, it's just going to go through the whole list and do nothing. I'm going to select that, hit C to comment it, naming this players locker. And again, when you call that custom event, the AI is going to go to the locker that the player is hiding in if they are hiding in one. I'm going to compile and save, and that is the code for going to each different locker. There is one other adjustment I'm going to make. So in the previous episode, when we made it search through the locker, we used a sphere trace by channel because the AI wasn't always going to be facing dead on the locker. But now it is because when it goes to the locker, it will be facing it dead on. So we can delete the multi sphere trace and replace it with a multi line trace by channel. It doesn't necessarily need to be a multi line trace. It can just be a line trace. However, we do already have all this code set up here. And it's not going to be any more or any less efficient, so we can just keep it. The return value will go into the condition of the branch, branch going in there, and out hit go into the for each loop with break. Again, you can change and remove this part here if you want, but it's not necessary to, and it might still collide with multiple things, so that might help you as well anyway. Because if there's something in front of the locker, it can go through that and then also hit the locker as well, just in case you have something bugged out there. So again, this could be more beneficial for you too. Now what we're going to do is a get act location is still going to go into the start, but for the end, what we're going to do now is go directly forwards. So we can right click and get actor forward vector with a return value going to a vector multiplied by a float. And I'm going to multiply this by 250. Set that to whatever you like, but obviously the further away you are, the higher the number needs to be. I'm then going to add these two together. So get act location, we're going to a vector plus a vector adding that to the multiplication there, and that's just to keep the line going in a straight line, and that will go into the end of the line trace there. So now it's going to actually work a lot better, because what it was doing if you don't do this is it might collide with a different locker and open up a different locker that it's not standing in front of. So we can compile and save this, and now we can also play it. So the way I'm going to test it is just again off of event begin play. And then delay, out of this, I'm going to first off set up the random locker. So go to random locker. Let's hit play and test this out. So it should just go to a random one of these lockers and search through it. So after five seconds, it's now gone to that one and it's searched through, no one's in there. So it's just gonna close it and then go about its business again if you have that set up. Let's check this again to see which one it goes to now because it should be a different one because it's random, although it has a 25% chance. So it could very well go to the same one, although it did go to a different one. Let's have a look one final time, then we'll move on to something else. So as you can see, it is now going over there. It's gone to the first one again, because again, it's a 25% chance. Now let's do the nearest locker. So go to nearest locker. So I believe it should just go to the far right. Yeah, that should be the nearest. So it should go there. Works perfectly like so. Now if we move it to be over here, it should go to the far left. Let's have a look. 
After five seconds, it's going to go to the far left locker, working perfectly like so. Now let's also test out the player's locker. So go to player's locker like so, hit play, and let's quickly run over hide in one, and let's hide in it. And now we should see it should come to this locker, working perfectly, search through, we're in here, so it's gonna catch us. And this now works perfectly, as you can see there. And obviously all I've got it set up as is the custom events here, so you're gonna to want to call these for whichever one you want to do. So let's say the AI sees the player go into a locker, you can just call go to player's locker. Or if you're at a random time in the game, you want it to just search a random locker, tell it to search a random locker. Or at a random point in the game, you want it to search the nearest locker, just tell it to go to the nearest locker. It's very simple, you can simply just right click and call function, go to nearest locker, go to player's locker, or go to random locker, working perfectly like so. It's very, very simple to do. So again, just as I'm doing the outro, I'll have this one on here. So I think that'll be it for this video, as we've done everything we wanted to do. We've set it up so the AI can either go to the player's locker and catch them if they're hiding in there, go to a random locker and still catch them if they're in there, or even go to the nearest locker and again catch them if they're in there. But if they're not in there while it goes to these, then nothing will happen. Or if they're not in the locker, it won't be able to go to the player's locker because obviously they're not in one. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.